Hello there, and welcome back to The Disconnected. I'm here with Ja, who is a uh, sort of different type of video for this channel, which uh, we're mostly going to be talking about art. But, I mean, this is still a very visual medium. And, uh, honestly, there's some really cool stuff about the actual physical media side of it. So we're going to discuss that. Ja, thanks so much for doing this, man. You, you're you're an inspiration and a brilliant mind, and I'm I'm honored to have you. Those are some kind words, my friend. I feel the <laughs> same way about you. I'm just so happy to just be a part of this this is such a cool such a cool spot so it's my pleasure it's been a it's been an interesting year we we were both part of a I don't, well now that i go to say it out loud i don't even know what to call it a, a group a class a, a session a, a fun network hangout and I, there are multiple conversations that have come from that that i'm just like inspired by the people that were a part of it. And you were one that really stuck out because every, every time we met, there's something else cool visually that like nobody else is doing. So, I mean, let's jump into the art side. Like what, what do you do? First of all, what do you tell people you do? Uh, well, I tell people I'm a painter and a muralist for the most part. Uh, I do a lot of other things, <laughs> but I think like that's, that's like the dream. If you could, if you could just do like one thing and stay focused, if you had the ability to do so, right. which I do not, um, then yeah, I'd say I'm a painter. I'm a painter. You know, I, I love to paint. It is my driving force. It gets me up in the middle of the night to like put five brush strokes down and I'm like, all right, good, <laughs> good. The madness shall subside now. <laughs> all about those brush strokes. Love that. Yeah, man. Uh, so how, how'd you get into it to begin with? Was it, was there something originally that inspired you or was it just that you were immediately drawn to it? I was, I, I'm, I'm a kid from the eighties who used to hang out in like arcades. And so we would go home we would go to hang out with all our friends at their, in their basements, and then we would try and redraw all the stuff we saw in video games <laughs> and make, like, paper toys of them and stuff like that. And so, like, drawing little kind of nondescript <laughs> Street Fighter-esque type things or G.I. Joe's <laughs> or, you know, just, just... I'm trying to think all the weird names of all these... Hasbro, the cartoons in the eighties, right? Um, all those things we just thought they were so cool, so we were always like trying to draw them, and like I didn't really, I didn't fall into love with being a painter until probably about my teens, when, when I was like, when I was like real little, we used to always get these like watercolor coloring books. It was a big thing in the eighties. Yeah, and you would just kind of take like a brush stroke. They give you like a little cheap plastic brush, and you dip it in water, and then you you follow these pre color <laughs> color like like uh, like I'm trying most, to think of their most color basic pencil of colors too type of thing or whatever. And I was way too impatient, so the whole page would be brown. Um, and it was just it was always one of those things where I was like, I got to do this. I I felt. I felt this like nervous energy that I needed to like keep making things constantly. And so, you know, now as I'm about to be 42, uh, <laughs> I've been doing it for almost my whole life. So that's a lot to, to look back on and consider that you've been doing that since you were a young kid, but it's obviously morphed over the years. Are, are you still inspired by pop culture for a lot of what you do or what, what inspires individual pieces now? I kind of ran the other way from that eventually. Something when like I went that. to art school, it kind of turned me against the art world in a lot of ways. <laughs> I hated it for a little while because I was like, this is all I've ever been. And, you know, you have a consciousness of, you have like a suddenly like crisis of who you are and what you've right. done in your whole life. And I was, I had this like, thought process that was like, I'm not looking at anything else ever again. I'm just going to draw from my mind. And then, you know, a couple more years go by and you're like, that was stupid. <laughs> 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 I'm totally going to change it up. I feel weird now when I do. Like, I do, I'll, I'll definitely do some stuff off of pop culture every once in a while. But I always feel weird about it. I was just like, oh, you're such a poser. And it's like, people don't care. Nobody cares. A hard but part pop just, culture stuff pays the bills a lot of times. It does, though. I mean, it's weird. It's weird to do like a like a 
they have a thing called here called Awesome Con. Awesome Con is like DC and Maryland's version and Virginia's version of like uh, Comic Con. Right. So they have those, and you can get like an artist alley booth. They are so expensive; it's insane. Yeah. Um, and you make a bunch of like merch basically out of it. You make a bunch of like original stuff, but you also make lots of pop culture stuff. Yeah. And I've definitely done them throughout a few years. I mean, I've I've drawn some stuff. I've gone on podcast or not podcast. I've gone on like Instagram shows and we've had like artist alley and we've just drawn random things and they've been like, I need you to draw this. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I I'm guess. like, it's probably not going to look like it, but let's go for it anyways. <laughs> well, I mean, we're talking about cons for a second. So, I mean, one of the things that artists are always, I don't know, it, for, for many, it can be like touchy to, to discuss what was the first time you sold something? What's the first time that somebody paid for your art? I was, let me say, I remember this because my father brokered it and asked for a cut. So <laughs> it stuck in my mind. I was Thanks, like, I can't, work, I can't work with other people anymore. They want too much of me. Um, I did this like drawing on that computer paper where you tore the sides off of. <laughs> on with like crayon and like i was always like a mixed media person i think it was partially because like i'd run out of something and i'm like whatever this will work um and i think i did like it was somewhere between like a drawing of like balrog from street fighter (laughs) which is basically like tokyo's version of like mike tyson um and i sold it to somebody for like 25 bucks and I remember my dad was like, so the commission on that's got to be like 50%. And I was <laughs> like, I'm going to keep this and you can get away from my art career. Um, but I think that was probably the first time. And I was like in a car. Uh, we were at like, I think we were in Tobago, uh, where my fam- where my father's family's from. And we were... We were in Trinidad and Tobago. We were on, in Tobago. We were driving in a Jeep. And I had this binder of all these drawings that I carried with me that were, like, my precious. Nice. And, uh, yeah, they, like, looked through them. A friend of his was looking through them. She's like, I really like this. This is pretty cool. And she was like, I'll give you $25. And I said, yes. And he's like, <laughs> you have to bargain. You have to talk <laughs> with people and get them to do more. And I'm like, I don't care. Right. Give me monies, and you know that's how it started. Uh, I probably should have taken it in American, but I didn't. Um, so that's probably worth like five dollars in actuality. But <laughs> but it was fun, man. It was just like I like the rush of it. There was like an excitement in this is something that I made that someone's going to treasure, right? And it just kind of became like this strange addiction after that. <laughs> So what, what's a good way to ask this? Uh, what are some of the things that feel the same from that first time? And when somebody still in 2023 is like, yeah, I, I want, I want that piece. It's, it's speaking to me. What, what is the same thing that you're feeling deep inside when they say that? Hmm. The work answer or the real answer. We got to hear that real answer, my friend. Uh, the real answer, nothing. <laughs> The real answer, I think I'm numb to it now. I think yeah. now when people say it, I go, yeah, all right, cool. And I just keep going. But I've, I've, I think it's because I've also, I've learned to like make it, make work. And then whether it's a personal project or even like a commission or anything like that, like I make it and then like I kind of just let it go. And it it is a part of whatever it becomes yeah. at that point. So if it goes to someone and they really like it, great. If it goes to someone... And then they put it in the closet. No one ever sees it again. And hopefully it goes to an estate sale one day and breaks up a marriage. That's what I, <laughs> that's what I want. <laughs> I want P- I want a war of the roses type moment, but over my work. It's a long game. It's like a long game, yeah. really. It's what it is. There is, there is that moment when you call something done and that piece of art is really no longer yours anymore. So I totally get yeah. that. You just got to let it go. You'll drive yourself, you'll drive yourself up the wall trying to like figure out the destination of all these things once they leave your hands. Yep. And you kind of just have to gotta let that go. You'll be better for it, is what I always tell people. 
So, so what about the journey from that first sale to the moment when you thought, you know, maybe this could actually like pay for my life. It, it, was there an actual transition for you? Uh, there've been some checks out there. There've definitely been some <laughs> checks where I was like, Whoa, I'm not dead anymore. <laughs> 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 type of thing. And that was crazy. Um, yeah, I, I, it was weird. I had this theory when I was like in my twenties that like, if I made as many paintings as my favorite painters made in their entire lives, then I was a master of my craft. Which doesn't make any sense because, like, they spent their lives doing it. Right. And I was just kind of rushing through work. I think I did, like, 300 paintings in one year one time. Like, it was just madness. But at the time, I think I didn't have a TV. So it was like, this is what I do. <laughs> it was like the radio. Right. The radio, some music, and, like, in this. This is what I do. And I just kind of just fell into it. And then all these people started, like, approaching me because they saw my work. And I wasn't advertising it so yeah. much, but it was just, and they started buying it and they were buying it like a lot. And that kind of gave me the idea that I was like, you know, you might be good at this. You might not just like doing this. You might actually be good at this. Yeah. And that was kind of the turning point. I can't really pinpoint it. It was probably like my twenties, sometime in my twenties when I was just like, all right. There might be, you know, you might, you might want to take this a little more seriously. This could, uh, this could work out. This could work out. So unlike a lot of modern artists, you, you've not brought up like uh, Wacom t- tablets or uh, digital creations or anything here. Why, why not, Ja? What, what, what's the difference there? I, I mean, I definitely have used those. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It doesn't have the same... I didn't have the same grain. Like, I'm that weirdo who goes into, like, an art store and, like, feels the paper with his hand. Same. You know, love I'm, doing I'm stuff the like guy that. who, I, you know, I'm also the one who, like, feels something he doesn't like is, like, wiping his hands on his shirt. <laughs> like, I just, I look like I'm just, like, this weird, like, aristocrat for some reason. Um, so, I've definitely, I've done stuff with Wacom. I have a Wacom tablet. I have, like, an iPad. I have... I have those things. When I want to do, like, like, merch, I'll do sometimes digital because it just transfers better. Yeah. But that was a struggle to to get to the point where I was comfortable even doing that, where I didn't feel like it looked... Now, I know this is a controversial thing to say. It didn't look like crappy NFT art. (laughs) And so, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I didn't get into it. Uh, to this day, like I know a lot of really amazing digital artists. I am not one of those people. Yeah, I love physically making stuff with my hands. It's just some of the some of the tactile aspect of it. It just it connects. Like there's a there's a root, and it just kind of grabs hold of it. Well, and that's that's the thing, especially for me. Obviously, as I sit in front of this throne of random movies that uh, most people don't have in their home anymore, that's what excites me about things like you. When I when I order a zine from somebody and it comes in a painted, hand painted item with I did, I, did. I, I mean, just to show everybody, we've got the card on the inside. You've got stickers for people to actually touch. And then the coolest part, of course, is the art in here. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time so nobody can uh, see all of it. But you you should go purchase this from Joe. If, if there are any left, they're probably not at this point. There's two. There's two oh, left. I sold, I sold like two in like a day a couple days ago. Somebody just called me and they were like, hey, send me two. And I was like, all right, cool. Uh, so, so where did that come from? And obviously, uh, I probably should have showed the cover a little bit better, but we've got Murder by the Dozen. Um, why, why this in 2023? I was, so I'm one of those artists who is ridiculous and has tried lots of other people's like projects and then just decided they didn't like them yeah. because for snickety or whatever. And um, so like, yeah, there was like Inktober and all this stuff. And I remember one year I was like, I'm just not interested in these prompts. I'm just going to make my own. Yep. So I then named it Jawtober because, <laughs> you know, humble, humble people. Um, and then from that, I just was thinking about it. And I was like, you know, it would be. And I made like posters and I did all these things. And uh, slowly but surely, I started doing more kind of focused work during the month of October. So I was like, I'm not going to make 30 pieces because, like, I don't want to have to keep this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <It's gonna work laughs> 
And so I was like, what if I just do like 12 paintings? I'll do 12 paintings for the month. And I want to do crows because those have been some of my more popular works. And I thought about it in a zine aspect. It was kind of funny because I typically just make work. I don't think about it on how it's going to sell. Yeah. Which is probably why I make too many things that are like five feet tall. Because <laughs> I don't think stuff through sometimes. Um, but, and this was just one of those things where I was like, this made me really happy to do. And so I started doing all these like little surreal drawings and kind of paintings and weird kind of just textures and stuff. And it was, it was fun. And I've kind of always told all the artists I know, like if you're making art and you're not enjoying it, like right. make something else. Exactly. Exactly. Um, it, it is a really interesting zine just to sit and sort of, uh, I, I guess like digest in a weird way, because it's one of those things that you, it, it's obviously you're not going to leaf through it. You want to sit there and really immerse in it and feel kind of what, what you're trying to feel and, and what you're trying to convey through all this, because it's so, it, it's dynamic in a way that we don't really get from a lot of stuff nowadays. And I, I mean, I, I guess the, the real underlying question there is what, what do you want people to get out of your art? Is there an overlying theme that you are trying to convey? Is it more of a, a personal thing? What does it, what does it mean to you? I try to oftentimes make sure that like people feel included. Like I th that's the hardest thing when you look at a lot of work that's in like galleries and in museums and stuff, like you, it's beautiful yeah. and it's skillful, but like, I've always had this theory and it's ridiculous. I, I imagine, but <laughs> there's all this artwork that got destroyed around like for during world war two. Yep. And during that time process, a lot of the work that got saved is very similar work. That's why we have like the abstract period yeah. and all these things, because like we, and we, and the most, for the most part, a lot of it kind of has the same feel to it. Like there's not like an abundance of like Japanese cubist painters, you know, and I'm sure there were, but you don't see that. Right. And so I try in a lot of ways to make my subject matter the people who I feel are mostly unseen because like they should feel, they should feel like they're looking, you know, there should be a Mona Lisa version of all these different types of people in the world. And for me, like that's really important, you know, as far as my figures go, right. the surrealist stuff, you know, that just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's just craziness. But um, but I, I try to think about that when I make a lot of work, just because I don't know. I want people to feel. I want people to feel like they are works of art, and they're they're the things they when they look in the mirror they can feel beautiful. Like that to me is really important to me. Like I've had people at shows go, I love this piece because I've ne never seen anything like this, and it reminds me of so and so, my dad or my yeah. mom or my sister or myself or my brother or whatever. And like, I really like that. Like that, that to me is like such a good feeling to convey for people who I don't know. Right. That's the, so. that's the coolest thing about art for me is that there's so many people that, I mean, you'll never even see half the people that you're uh, touching, that you're inspiring, that you are giving great feelings to, and they are looking at something of yours every single day and, and just enjoying life because of that piece. That's a fun way to look at it. I don't think I ever thought about that. Way. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I'm going to borrow that. Um, the unseen is an interesting idea. And one of the things, uh, probably just to touch on for just a second, but I mean, just how depressing it is, how, how much media over the years we've lost and saying it like that meaning makes media as a piece because we've lost tons of film. We've lost tons of TV, lots of tons of art, but I mean, there's so many times where we have examples in history where certain people are literally controlling the narrative of what people get oh, to yeah. see. And it sucks so much. <laughs> there's so many, well, you look at like all these, the big thing, I think if we're going to, if we refer to like movies, I guess is the best way to yeah. think of it, films. Um, I think every time there's like, you know, some director's cut that comes out yep. of whatever movie from 30 years ago, and then you're like, 
Well, that's a different movie. Entirely. That's a completely different movie than what you saw, you know, forever ago. Yeah. Like, and it's it's so interesting to see that perspective or it's like, oh, this is so this was this was completely about something else and they just cut all yep. that out. And it's like, wow, that's interesting. And somebody chose and that. Weird. Somebody had the, the power and the audacity to choose that. <laughs> like it's too deep. Pull it back. I uh, we need to make Hasbro toys. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best examples of that, like right now, that's pretty relevant, is the Warriors. I mean, one of the most like yeah. impacting, influential films for quite a while. And it for years you couldn't see the theatrical version, and just. I, I believe this month the the 4K version finally came out with the theatrical. And what's funny is the studio had released something called the director's cut for years. The director yeah. Walter Hill never wanted that to go out like that. It was the studio doing so it, weird. and they he, they asked him. He's like, "Yeah, cool, call it the director's cut." And now he finally changed it in 2023. That movie took me in such a weird like Google spiral for a while, <laughs> where I was like, like I started going through like YouTube and like, like looking at the people who the Warriors is based on. Because, like, they had, like, the 1970s, like, child gangs yep. that ran New York and New Jersey <laughs> um, and Chicago and all that. They had more – there were more gangs. It's very much like the scene where there's all the gangs in the park and, like, there's, like, 2%, 2% of cops <laughs> make up all of the gangs. Yep. It's the entire police force, and it's, like – the it's just gigantic, and it's crazy. <laughs> and – it's just so interesting because I'd see that. And then we found my wife found the book a couple years back and my brother-in-law got really into it. Yeah. So then I read it. It is a completely different story. There are no heroes. <laughs> <laughs> it is very different. I do not recommend if you have if you have any type of euphoria about the warriors, don't read that book. <laughs> it's a good book. But it's going to mess up a lot of things for you. Speaking of crafting the narrative, yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah. a big difference. There's a lot of there's a lot of James Raymars in that <laughs> book, put it that way. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we brought up movies, and movies is originally what brought us together. So so what role does movies play in your life nowadays? Um, The funny thing was, I remember when I first got, when I set up my first studio, I used to go to a Blockbuster, and I would go for like the four for 20. Yeah. VHS set and I just grabbed these random looking movies and they would become the soundtrack for my paintings. Nice. And so the funny thing is I could remember the words for for movies and still had not really had watched them over other than like over my shoulder occasionally. <laughs> so that's kind of where it starts off honestly. And then slowly it turns into I watch a thing like uh one of the movies I've always loved for the the artwork in it is a movie called The Science of Sleep. Mm. It is a weird, weird, fantastic movie with uh, Gabriel Garcia Bernal. Bernal. And he is an insomniac who's just moved to France. His father died. He's living with his mother and her unit. She's off. She's off and about most of the time. And he's just... He has these like vivid dreams of being a talk show host, but his entire set is made up of like toilet paper tubes, I guess is the best way to describe it. <laughs> and it's just, it's almost like this weird, like old set made of that. And I've always like wanted to do that as the backdrop for an art show. Like it's just, it's always just, it's always sitting in the back of my mind where it's like, how much do you miss being burned by a glue gun? You can do this. You can do this. <laughs> That's an interesting one. Science of Sleep. I haven't heard about that in a long time. I don't think I've seen it since it came out. Nobody really likes that movie. But <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad. And I was like, yeah, it's like a French movie. They're all sad. What do you want? <laughs> That's true. It's, I think Charlotte Gainsbourg is in that one too, right? She is in that. She is in that. She is also a mess. <laughs> um. In that, in this case, in that movie specifically, in this in this example, but yeah, I mean, they're all they're all like dysfunctional characters. But right. I mean, at the time when I was watching it, like I was a dysfunctional artist, so it made it relate. I related perfectly to it at the time. So, 
Uh, movies brought us into that, that group in the beginning, but, uh, there's a few things that you've talked about on your channel surrounding movies. So what, what all do you cover on, uh, on YouTube and stuff so people can give a watch to that? Um, a lot of times. So I do a show on Monday mornings called, uh, Painter's Breakfast and Painter's Breakfast is a silly show <laughs> where I eat food in front of people and talk with my mouth open, with my mouth full of food, but not open. I cover my mouth. Um, most of the time. And we just talk about whatever. And a lot of times people ask me about movies they just saw. And they're like, hey, have you seen this thing or whatever? And we talk about it, you know? I think I think the funniest one I had, the funniest discussion I had was about Dune of all movies. Because <laughs> I remember the original Dune with Sting. Yep. And now they have the new one. And I don't mind the new one. I remember liking the weird sci-fi television series, movie series, television movie series they yep. did. Um, and just stuff like that. Like, it's always been kind of fun. I, I like, I like the references of movies because like you can say a thing and people go, ah, and it just hits them all yeah. in their head or whatever and takes them back. Like to this day, I still know people who go up to people and say shake and bake. <laughs> and it's just funny. <laughs> like, it's so stupid, but it's so funny <laughs> at the same time. Uh, Painter's Breakfast is incredibly calming, and uh, on on a Monday morning, especially like uh, next week, even though uh, Monday is a holiday, so it won't work for me. But I'm out of work all this week, so um, I probably will put it on next weekend just to get into that woo saw part of the, the the week. And it's it's nice. It's always nice just to catch up. And most of the time, I can't comment because I'm typing like crazy. But just to be able to hear the voice, and it's it's nice just to hear everybody checking in and and seeing how the week is and. See what's going on with you. It's it's fun. I think the most the funniest thing about that is most of the time you ask people, you're like, so what are you having for breakfast? And they're like, I don't eat breakfast. Same. And you're like, I don't know why you like this show. <laughs> I don't know why you like this show. <laughs> I'm like, if you hate breakfast, I'm confused on what we're doing here. Yeah. Um, so what what do you got going on right now with like uh, any any galleries coming up? Anything that you want to talk about? Uh, I'm working on some commissions, which, you know, I am famously a hater of commissions, yep. um, which, which is weird, but you know, it's hard for me sometimes to make work for other people. So, but I do it and I do it well, I like to think, but it can be sometimes like a sleepless yeah. couple of weeks of me trying to like do something. I'm doing like an album cover for a guy right oh, now, nice. which is kind of interesting. So that'll be fun. I'm not sure. I've got ideas about what I want to do with it. But uh, to all the artists out there, I have learned the hard way that you have to give people contracts. <laughs> I know you want to be nice. Don't be nice. Get a contract. Amen to that. And as many times I've built stuff up for people and have gone, yeah, I don't think I'm going to go with this. You know what? Or something comes up and they go, well, I can't do this. And you're like, okay, cool. Well, I mean, could you compensate me for, like, all the time and art I made for you? And they're like, ghosted. Yep. And it's like, okay, cool. So now I now I at least get, like, 20% before I start showing people and discussing stuff with people. Just just to cover, like, materials and time and stuff. And the anxiety of it. It's not the it. sexy <laughs> part of being a painter. It's definitely not the sexy part of being an artist, but it's... Right. You know, in order to make a living at this, like, you have to, you, you have to take it on that level. Which sucks, but it is what it is. What sucks is it kind of hits every industry, so everybody should be heeding that warning. This is not good, man. People, people got to get better about this. Like it's just, it's such like a. I don't, I don't think people understand this is a soapbox moment. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the this is the thing that people don't get about it is it's like you put your you really even if you like I'm like I said I'm not a huge fan of commissions. Yeah. But like when I make them, I put my I put my heart into them. I put I put, you know, 35 years worth of experience into them. I I do all these things and like there's a labor of love that goes into that. And it's so heartbreaking and disappointing when people take advantage of you. Because you're just like, well, like, am I waiting? You know, it makes me go like, well, am I wasting my right. life? Like, what am I doing here? You know, it's Am I if I if I'm just gonna do this, I might as well just stop, exactly. you know. And you know, it's not true, but for those moments that creeps in where you're just like, oh, what did I do to myself? Yep. A lot of anxiety comes from those things for sure. Yeah. Uh, it all works out in the end, man. <laughs> Usually. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got uh, a lot going on in life and all that, but to hear a word like muralist from somebody, I immediately like crumple on the inside thinking of how I would feel making that sort of creative endeavor for myself. How do you do that? How, how do you how do you create a piece of art that you're stoked about the world seeing on the side of a building somewhere? Like a lot of panic yeah. attacks. Um, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of like I'm not sure I'm going to sleep tonight. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm painting and repainting it in my head, yeah. uh, as well as like a mock that I've already done, but I'm still like, am I going to have enough time to do yeah. this? Can I, how am I going to keep all this stuff on me? Because if I put it down and I walk forward and then I turn back around, it'll be yeah. gone because people are jerks and they'll just steal stuff for no reason. They don't even know what it is. They steal it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's definitely, it's hard, but it's. It's such a beautiful thing when it works out, though, and it comes together, yeah. and then it's there forever. Like, there is a piece of mine that is in D.C. right now that is across the street from this bar called Jackie's, and I did this stoop for this customer who had a business, and I painted their stairs like a, almost like a rug, basically, but like a funky, nice. weird stuff that I do. Weird stuff yeah. that I do type. type <laughs> and, um... It worked out really well. I had a day to do it from like sun up to sundown. So that was a huge panic attack because typically I have like weeks yeah. to work on stuff. Um, but it all worked out fine. And I mean, it's been there for many years now. It's, you know, it's been tagged. It's been all types of stuff, but it's still mostly there. And you just kind of, you know, I remember the first time I heard somebody, somebody ran up to me to tell me and I was like, I mean, that sucks, but there's nothing right. I can do about it. Um, <laughs> It's not mine. Exactly. You have to let it go. So I think that's kind of the main thing. Like if you, you'll you spend hours and hours and weeks and weeks and months and months trying to work on these pieces and then they go up and then you have absolutely no control beyond that moment. Like you can set contracts with people that say if it gets messed up or the weather gets yep. bad or it gets stripped, you I'll come back and work on it and fix it for you. But, you know, in this day and age, some places don't want to do that. They don't want to be having an open contract with you. Interesting. Because I'm like, well, no. Because then I, cause I do have right. to pay you to do that. Right. So, I mean, it all kind of comes into it. There's like, there's so many facets of it that I don't think, until you're in it, you don't realize you have to keep in mind. But you just, I don't know, you just go at it with a dream and a hope and <laughs> a couple of paintbrushes and... Hopefully it works yeah. out. A uh, little bit of an existential question for you. So because of my upbringing, I had, uh, I'll just get right to it. I, I had religion shoved down my throat. And because of that, mm. I can't like normally feel pride about the work that I do ever. I don't know what it is. I, I think everything sucks. It's not even like perfectionist. It's just, I'm terrible and everybody feels the same way, no matter what they say. Um, how, how do you deal with, with yourself and your, your work? Do you look at something and you're genuinely proud of it? Is there, is there a layer of you that's still trying to get to that? Cause I know for a lot of creatives that can be a genuine fight that they, they're, they're reaching for. There are many levels of self-doubt. Um, I, I come from a once polytheistic rel religious background and then they moved here and they became very monotheistic. So they joined like the Catholic church and all that stuff. And I was, it, it never really grabbed hold of right. me, but the humbleness of it, the inability to just like take yep. a compliment is something that I struggle with to this day. Um, I think the funniest, it's like the nastiest thing to say, but it's the most truthful thing to say. I look at some work that other people have done that's really bad, that's done well, and then I look at the stuff that I don't like that I've done, and I go, it's better than that, <laughs> and it feels better. <laughs> and I feel better about that. It's weird. It's a weird place to be in, but sometimes you need yeah. those moments where you look at you look at the work that your peers or sometimes the people who are just coming up uh, make, and you go, yeah, it's okay. And you realize like how much pride you, if someone were to come up to you and go, you know, I didn't like that. If that doesn't aggravate you, <laughs> then you don't have pride in what yep. you do. I think a lot of times like not being able to like take a bow is one thing, 
but to have to know it's good and then to have someone go, you know what would have been better <laughs> if like they should have fan casted this so that like I made an AI. I, I used I used AI to replace uh, to re, to replace all the characters, all the people who played in Evil Dead with Tom Cruise's face, <laughs> and it's amazing. It's it's Evil Cruise dead now, and it's amazing. And you just look at that and you go like, I hate technology. Technology yeah. is the worst. I don't want anything to do with this. I'm gonna go back to scratching things into a page like a caveman. Oh, only on a page that feels good though. <laughs> yeah, but it's gotta feel good though. It's gotta have that texture. It's gotta have that weight. Um, oh, that's awful. Yeah, you just you figure out how to make peace with it. I guess I don't think I think I'm I think I'm a I look I look more sometimes at my achievements, even though I like to say those don't matter as much because like my 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 actual my my financial achievements on art have been very well. So I can look at those, but oftentimes I feel kind of like those are a little hollow yep. sometimes. But then I think of like the basic aspect of there was a time in my life where I would look at a blank page, I would start to draw something, get like two and a half lines in and go, I fucked it up. And then I take yep. it, throw it away. <laughs> and I've learned to like, just let that go where it's like, eh, it's not perfect. I can fix it later. And then I just keep going with it and I keep working and I keep making and I keep doing all these things like there's very little stuff that i just trash and throw away and for me that is like my biggest achievement that i'm i learned to accept this my style of art because i always tell artists that your style is simply how you draw something and you're okay with it and that's it that is whether you mean for it to be a signature thing or not how you draw an eye is very signature to you. Even when you're trying to draw like somebody right. else, it's signature to the way that you do it because your hand curves in a certain way or your shoulder or your elbow or whatever. And I think, you know, the same way Wes Anderson has a style in directing and stuff like that, like they've all got these... When you learn to love your style, you learn to accept and appreciate yourself a little yeah. more. Even if you can't admit it to yourself... Like, there's definitely, like, a thing that you do that you always do. And you say it's, like, a thing that it's, like, oh, well, it's just because I like to finish things. Yep. And it's, like, no, but that's – you you love that about it. You do. It's true. Uh, I, I mean, you bring up something that I think is kind of overlooked. Uh, a lot of the times when we talk about art, especially in 2023 in the age of AI and tablets and all the technology shit, it's the fact that you can just tap undo – and redo something 43 times and it costs nothing it's a joke it takes the humanity out of everything and it's i, I think that was really important just to to highlight and point out because even in like music in in certain records when you can hear no their voice was not perfect right there but something about that makes it that much more personal because I know that it was them. I know it wasn't, you know, the 840 second take that they auto tuned that made it sound that good on the track. It is that interesting. Oh yeah. I mean, it's like, it's like film, you know, it's like taking pictures with film. Like there is an imperfection there. There is a, they had 25 chances to get yeah. it right, you know, type of thing. Um, I mean, I don't think, I know I come, I come hard on, on AI people a lot. So, uh, but I, I don't think people are talentless because they work on digital stuff. I think some oh, yeah. digital stuff is amazing. Sure. I think there's definitely like, I think it's, I think there's so much complexity to being good at your craft. I think there are definitely people who try and shortcut things. And I think they are going to regret that in 10 years. Like the most calm, I think it was like an interview I did maybe about a year ago somebody asked me what do you think is the difference between your art and the art that some of these people are doing that's like following trends or they're using filters or doing stuff like this and i was like i'll still be here in 10 years yep. because i have a passion for what i do you oftentimes people who use who oftentimes use kind of more like fast ways to do things don't oftentimes appreciate them and then when they need to dissect them to go back and look at, I look back at some of my old work 
And I'm like, man, you had patience. I don't have that anymore. <laughs> you know, but I but I can appreciate that I did at the time. You know, I, I see it. Um, I knew an art professor once who told me, she was a college art professor who was taking in people to, to admit to the school. And she said, the biggest problem you run across with people who use those types of things are their portfolios are all over yep. the place. You can't get consistency when it's not you actually making it. Like you just, you won't, you won't find that. You won't find over overarching themes. You won't find messages in these, in these moments. Like I don't necessarily always mean to have depth to everything I do, but I know, but I can tell you what I was thinking at the time and what was going on in the world while looking at it. Like it takes me back to a certain part in my life. And I always call it like a time traveler moment where you go back, you look at something, you're like, oh, yeah, no, I remember that. No, that was a bad, that was not a good idea. That was not a good idea. <laughs> I got food poisoning right after that. Um, uh, so you talk about being here in 10 years. What, what are some What are some achievements that you want to knock out over the next few years? Um, I want to get into some more crafty type things. Like I've been playing with this idea for years of making like a weird kind of like, like the way the book is with all the, like the crows that have like the, uh, that have like the, um, faces and stuff with them. I've got my, book right here too. um, maybe taking something like one yeah. of these and making them into like a piggy nice. bank and selling those shows. Like, I think that would just be so yeah. cool. Um, I want my brand, which is a uh, painter files, because I have like the Painter Files podcast, there's Painter's Breakfast. There used to be Painter's Radio, but that went away. <laughs> um, the app I was using died. AMP. AMP was the app. AMP was owned by Amazon, I think. And then they shut it down so they couldn't make any money off of it. Which, you know, weird. You can't play other people's music <laughs> and make money. That's so strange. Um, and yeah, you know, and then I've got the videos and I've got all these other things. And I'm like, I'd love to see that expand, you know? expand and be something that i can do more often i'd love to finally make that set and burn my hands with hot glue um get some industrial hot glue gun (laughs) and just somebody look at me and go like what happened to your arm and be like well we don't need to talk about it it's fine don't worry about it it'll be fine there was was a glue incident (laughs) there was a glue incident it's fine it's not a big deal um so uh painter files podcast you want to tell everybody what that is since we didn't spend any time on that um, my podcast, my on again, off again <laughs> podcast, um, is basically just kind of like a painter's diary. Like it's one of those, I let people know what's going yeah. on in my life. I let people know what I'm working on as far as art goes. Uh, a lot of times we talk about like things that are going on in the art world, uh, hot takes, say, um, and just, Interesting little bits. I mean, so I'll do like a movie review every once in a while. If I really see a great movie I like, if I see a movie that's like ridiculously bad and I enjoy it, like Shin Godzilla. I love Shin Godzilla. It's such an ugly yeah. movie, but I love it because it partially because he's so ugly in that. It's, you know, I remember growing up watching like Godzilla movies and like, uh common rider and just all stuff that was like dubbed and stuff like that and just those were like those are the movies of like my my childhood and i I remember watching them on like vhs and and black and white or gray and black is probably a better way to describe it um yeah having to get one of those like tape grinder thing you put it in you hit it down it rewinds tape for you like the whole thing, you watch the tape so much that it would yep. rip, and you'd have to like spool it, do the sad spool out of the, out of the VCR, and be like, "Oh, it's dead <laughs> now." And you had to decide whether you were mature enough to just throw it away. So you just had a bunch of boxes of tapes that you couldn't play <laughs> anymore. Did you go see uh, Godzilla minus one yet? I have not got to see it yet. I hear it's really good though. I'm dying to see it. Unfortunately, it's been busier than hell. So. Hopefully soon. Yeah, that's kind of been the problem <laughs> right now, too. Um, yeah, so uh, Painter Files will be linked in the description yeah. below for everybody. Check out the Painter's Breakfast. Uh, buy some arts. I will link everything possible under the sun. 
Uh, any other any other projects you want to make people keen to? Hmm, things about stuff. <laughs> um, I want to eventually. I'd love to at some point in time, like start maybe like an artist summer camp. I think that'd be cool to get like a bunch of artists together who are coming up who for some reason think I'm doing well. Uh, <laughs> and then I can kind of help them work on some projects and then maybe get them some shows and just do stuff like that. We do more like more, I guess more come together and make like an art collective yeah. type of thing. And like, I'm always trying to, I'm always like meeting up with other artists and like we do stuff together every once in a while. Um, I'd love to grow that more. I think that would be really fun to have like a summer gallery walk together and stuff like that. Like all my friends get cool and then they move away. So <laughs> <laughs> they're like, Oh, I'm going to move. You know, it's, it's a strange, it's a strange fun thing, but it's, you know, so everybody that's an artist that's cool. Move to DC basically. <laughs> basically, basically either that or either that or get one of those weird, like uh Roombas, but put like an iPad on it and we can hang out. It'll be great. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll keep an eye out on that. I mean, there's there's a bunch of people that I think that are coming up that would probably benefit from the the literally at this point decades of experience doing the admin side of it. That's something that most people don't learn, like the contract thing. People get taken yeah. advantage of the how uh, you know best ways to store items, best ways to not have things get stolen, things to look out for for a gallery. I, I'm sure there's a lot that you could teach people. I mean, I'll try. I'll try. Very cool. I thought of my top. You didn't ask me about my top five movies. I thought oh, five. let's do it. Let's discuss. To the top I, five. I'll splice I this stre- in. Let's I do a top five. About then. it all day. I was like, <laughs> I gotta come up with the top five. I all right, y'all. Out. Hit me with the with the number five. Let's discuss number five. All right, number five, slice. Okay. The werewolf pizza movie. <laughs> yeah, that it's came so out of nowhere. With Chance the Rapper. It was such a bad, yeah. fun movie. It's so bad, but it's so it's such like a well-produced grindhouse movie. That's how it's, I think it. It's pretty fun. It is fun though. It was one of those movies I saw. It 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 brings you back to the blockbuster video thing where like I found out about movies because the trailers of unknown movies yep. that would then come out. And then you'd have to like search because there's no internet at this point so or there's there's not a real internet anyways so you've got to go to tape stores and like look through boxes and shelves to find these like weird little yep gems basically and so slice kind of slice was past that but it's kind of one of those things where it was like i saw a trailer and i was like when is this movie gonna fucking come out already well and slice is kind of exactly like that it's yeah. only been released on dvd it barely played anything theatrically you that can movie get got... digitally now yep. but it, it it barely yeah i don't think i'd be surprised if anyone ever saw it in a movie theater to be honest i played a festival or three i'm sure okay well that's cool <laughs> so it's not all right me nice chance um, the rapper at number five what do we got at number four uh moonrise kingdom i just okay. like i just like the way that movie looks yeah like there's just such like a good like childhood stab a guy who tries to stab your dog movie you know and i just <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate it <laughs> have you have you seen his last few movies i didn't see the very last one i saw the french connection the french dispatch which yeah. i thought was good um i feel like his movies have kind of fallen off a little bit but they're still beautiful Visually, they're amazing. Speaking but, of styles, somebody yeah, that obviously has a stylistic. style. <laughs> his style, his style is his style brings me back. I don't always love his movies, but his style brings me back. All right, Chance Rapper Wes Anderson. What we got? Number three, uh, The Shape of Water, because I love Guillermo del Toro. Nice pick. Yeah. Uh, what, a, what's great about this one? I like the time period. The way that's kind of shot looks really cool. Mm-hmm. Um. Time period sounds wrong because I'm like, no, nineteen early 1950s is not a good time period for him. <laughs> Wait, um, that wasn't a good period of life. That's not for a people? good period so much. <laughs> um, but like the way it's shot, I love, I love like the creature of the Black Lagoon yeah. look to the monster. Um, there's just something very kind of it's dark, but it's also kind of sunny at the same. But it's like there's nice, there's a nice color palette to it, but it's yeah. it's a pretty dark movie. But it's got a lot of like yellows and like light blues and stuff in it, yeah. and like kind of crimson reds and stuff. It's just, it's very, 
I don't know. It's very it's very beautiful to the eyes, and the story is really good. Very Del Toro too. It, yeah, a lot of his stuff. Again, again, very style focused yeah. director. No, I'm weird that way. No, it's uh, a good thing. Let me see. Science of Sleep, because okay. I'm because I'm, I'm addicted to the the style of that movie. Uh, a surprise one, Nacho Libre. I love Nacho I Libre. Adore Nacho Libre. <laughs> it's so stupid, but so good. Oh my god, my wife and I will randomly just kind of say lines from that movie. Same. <laughs> For no reason. There's no build up to it at all. She'll just look at me and say, "Get that corner of my face." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, that's a good. We should watch that movie again." I kind of want to watch that tonight now. It's so good. So Nacho good. Libre is a solid solid pick. And I love it because like I grew up watching like Mexican wrestling most of my life. And so it's a great depiction of what Mexican wrestlers look like. Yep. Like they're not particularly buff. They're just kind of strong, <laughs> upper bodied, little legged men. And they do all these crazy things because they're basically just acrobats working off of each other. And that movie really elevate, really kind of illustrates that really well, where it's just yep. ridiculous and it calls itself out for being ridiculous. <laughs> and I love that. It's one of the only Nickelodeon movies. I was shocked when I found out it was made by Nickelodeon. It was an odd time for Nickelodeon, I think. Yeah, I was like, this is like dark for them, actually. Yeah. This is kind of a dark movie, but I love that movie. That movie's great. It's a fun pick. A- any other major ones that you want to point out? The last one was The Crow. The Crow was one of those movies oh. when I was younger. This really pretty girl loved that movie. And so I had to see that movie with her sitting in a basement and it became like this really she was not as into it as i thought she was and i was really i was more into the movie than i was ever going to think want to hang out with her and like i'm 12 so (laughs) but it was one of those movies where like i loved the the it's it's such a powerful it's such a powerful but like silly in some ways movie. Yeah. And it's not particularly colorful, but it's got it's got some great one-liners in it. And great they, soundtrack. They just get God, yeah. This is Alice in Chains. Jeez, I haven't heard anything similar to them in a very long time. And Killer soundtrack. STP and just geez, man. That's that's a whole that's a whole nother conversation right there. If it's movies <laughs> on soundtracks, there's so many there's so many movies that have better soundtracks than they do movies. Yes, yeah. There was one movie I was just talking about this with my mom. Um, God, what is the name of it? It was uh, uh, Queen of the Damned. Yes, that soundtrack is incredible. The that movie is, is not incredible. The movie is not. Well, it's like Garden State. Garden State has a great soundtrack. Yeah. Garden State is an okay movie. But it's it has a it has a it has a generational soundtrack though. Yeah. So it's just kind of one of those things. Captured a lot. I'd love to like give people like bullshit like super deep answers for like your top five. <laughs> You're like, oh, the color purple, and you know, and it's like, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I like stupid movies that are fun, and they create the the best movies I like are the ones where I'm like watching them and I have to almost pause it to go then make art because I'm inspired and I'm like, I can't sit still anymore. Like those are, those are my favorites. So to finish that thought out then, when's the last time that happened? What's the last thing that made you pause and go immediately empty your brain? I think I was watching. (laughs) This is stupid. (laughs) I love that. I think I was watching the, I was sitting down on the couch with my wife, watching the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. (laughs) Okay, but to be fair, it's a very pretty movie. It's a very pretty, but it's also a very fun movie. And I was like, I want to like... And I didn't want to make any Ninja Turtle stuff or anything. I was like, oh, man. You know what would be really cool? If I made this crazy surrealist painting on the back of a turtle. (laughs) Like, I make this giant painting of a turtle, and then I make this figure on top of it and all these things going on. And then I was like, okay, let me go work on that. And I just got up. My wife says I'm notorious for it. I'll just get up and walk off into the <laughs> studio. And she's like, you're not coming back. And I was like, Oh, sorry. We're still watching the movie. I forgot. I forgot. And I'll come back and whatnot. I love that. Uh, top five, big, big points for me. Love a few of those. It's solid picks. And 
to be fair, I think a lot of people are about to discover the crow for the first time. I believe the producer or somebody like that just posted online that they're working on a 4K remaster of it. And so it's probably about to get a lot as of attention. As long as they don't remake it, I'm fine. I believe that has already happened. I know. I don't want to see that. I'm not going to watch it. I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> well, uh, it, it'll be I'll maybe the. Watch it. I'll probably. <laughs> That was a quick flop. <laughs> I don't want to, but I'll probably watch. <laughs> well, all we can hope for is it'll be the, the goth anthem for a generation. We'll see. We can only hope. I'm hoping like they'll pick someone over the top as a villain like Jason Momoa or something. Oh, that'd be fun. Just 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 like what? Did Ham you see up. the original at all? <laughs> what? Okay. Ja, this has been incredible. Uh, I, I hope for many years of inspiration and uh, for lots of success in your future. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. It has been an honor and a pleasure to do this. We'll talk soon. Yeah. Thank you for watching The Disconnected. On the way out, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, that you've liked the video, and that you've copied the link to be able to share it with someone else that may appreciate this.